so under duress. Welcome to the Sister Really News. You're under the house. Not all of it. <laughs> Just the, what, the bedroom and bathroom part? Yeah, and the basement floor is underneath me, so we're okay. Yeah, there's that. Well, there's always something under you. And I figured it out. I figured, a Batman poster you can't see, Batman picture that someone did for me, of the old t-shirt one. Yeah, yeah. You can't see two Batman things back there and one over there. Okay. And that means... <clears throat> I like Batman? Yeah. Okay. Well, I think I kind of knew that. So much as George Clooney almost killed the franchise, Adam West and Burt Ward literally saved it, even the comic book, because they were... Yes. And they made the comic go in a different direction, which is anyway. It was a great show, though. I loved the it show. Was it was fun. Yeah. It was and silly, I and want, everybody wanted to be on it. And the people at J.C. Penny in St. Cloud quit answering the phone because it was just parents calling for their youngsters. Do you have any Batman uniforms? No. Oh. <laughs> any Batman costumes? <laughs> My kid's short. Can I have a Burt Ward costume? My mom got in early. Yeah. She's German and keeps trying. Uh, Where was I now? Oh, this is truly news. Well, there, that's better. Uh, like, subscribe, and follow us. Please do the like time, the like button every time. The like, the like time, time button. button. Yes, we could a be a lifetime network. of like times. We could be like a network. Mm -hmm. Like time. Oh, we could do cheesy movies on today's like. Not no. about love, but no. about going. You know, I don't mind that kid. <laughs> Watch as John finds out he actually likes pepperoni. <laughs> So anyway, like, subscribe, and follow us. If you have a story, you can send it off to us. Email-ish would be great. Mm -hmm. uh, TITR at netradio.network. You can leave a comment wherever you found it. We're generally as the gutter outside Bodros. This is True Really News with Scott Combs and Tony Vercanis. All the news you're about to hear is true. Really? As far as you know. Carry on, my wayward, whatever you are. From In the Game National of Thrones, you'd be a fool, not a jester. Fits. Nary a difference. Yeah, actually, the fool didn't have to wear a hat like that, but okay. Well, I mean, maybe I'm the town idiot. Maybe. From the national... I mean, maybe. What? No. no. It's a difference it. in inflection. <laughs> From the National Post via Ronnie Tucker. <clears throat> we have a National Post? No, Canada does. Oh. One way to help tell how a Tyrannosaurus Rex digested food... And I'm going to pay off the foreshadowing from Mailbag. Yeah. Is to look at its poop. Bone fragments in a... So Jurassic Park was more documentary than we thought. Oh, absolutely. Bone fragments in a Tyrannosaurus Rex digested food is... What? Bone fragments, bone fragments. in a piece of fossilized excrement at a new museum in northern Arizona, <laughs> aptly named... The Poosium are among the tinier bits of evidence that indicate Rex wasn't much of a chewer. Well. The sample is one of 7,000 on display at the museum that opened in May in Williams, a town known for its Wild West shows along Route 66, wildlife attractions, and a railway to Grand Canyon National Park as well. The Poozium sign features a bright green T-Rex cartoon character sitting on a toilet to grab attention <laughs> for the buzzing neon lights and muffled 1950s music emanating from the other businesses. I can just see it now. The mom T-Rex going, Brandon Oswald Rex, you chew your food. <laughs> I can just see when you open the door, the bell oh, no, doesn't I'm ding. Not. It goes. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> It does the roar after, right after that. Because oh, yeah, because that was, oh, that was nice. Inside, display cases filled, filled, I say, with copper lights, fossilized feces from animals that lived millions of years ago, line the walls. They range from the minuscule termite droppings. And how do you even I don't find even want to know. I... To a massive specimen that weighs 20 pounds. That's nine kilograms for you across the pond. Museum's president and curator George Franzen bought his first chunk of fossilized feces. <laughs> See, kids, that's how it starts. You find one, you buy one, and all of a sudden you're hooked. <laughs> From a shop in Moab, Utah, 
Pretty soon your wife leaves you, your neighbors move out, the police arrest you, you're put in a home where the <laughs> sweaters tie, arms tie in the back. So there you are. He was 18 at the time. He should have known better. He should have stopped. He already loved dinosaurs and fossils, but had never heard of fossilized poop. From there, his fascination grew. It was funny. It was gross, he said. But I learned very quickly. It could tell us so much about our prehistoric past and how important they are to the fossil record. So mostly he's like a five-year-old boy. Pretty much. What's this? So uh, some poop. Ah. Mud okay. puddles. Squishing bugs and poop. Yeah. A highlight of Franzen's collection is a specimen that holds a Guinness World Record for picking colors or numbers more successfully than a chicken. Yeehaw? No. Oh, no. I was all excited there for a moment. Largest copper light left by a carnivorous animal. You want to know? You want to know? You want to know? You want to tell me you want to know? You want to know? No. Measuring more than two feet. That's no means 61. no, man. Yeah, like I ever listened to you. That's 61 centimeters. <laughs> And it's over six inches or 15 centimeters wide. Franzen said it's believed to be from a T-Rex. Given where it was found on a private ranch in South Dakota back in 2019. I How guarantee- do they know it wasn't from an animal chasing, being chased by the T-Rex? <laughs> For everything went. In fact, yeah. the animal next to its excrement passed through this one. The... Um, <laughs> can you imagine the t-rex though when finishing that one dudes check this out it's got to be a record what's a record i don't know but we're not when we're fossils <laughs> yeah they're gonna find this thing trust and me <laughs> that's almost as much crap as congress puts out no no we're not even close doesn't even match a day's output mm -hmm. i i have a miracle for you from the from the is it reptile what are snakes are there snakes reptiles i think animals so. they're well, vegetables they're, they're not snake minerals snakealoids a male snakealoid gave birth to more than a dozen babies uh you know i mean at least everybody thought the snake was male ronaldo generally not a name you give to a chick snake so now ronaldo nope still ronaldo the birth giving <clears throat> serpent was identified as a male when he was rescued from his previous owner years ago Oh my. I don't know how you, I, uh, but apparently snakes will find a way just like dinosaurs. Whoever observed Ronaldo's stuff clearly needs new glasses, though. Ronaldo actually turned out now to be female. Could he have changed? Maybe. Could he be a trans snake? Ooh, I think it would be possible. The snakes, I mean, worm. Did the eyeshadow give it away and the glitter? <laughs> And the Adam's apple. The snake's caretaker figured that uh, figured that out after the Brazilian rainbow boa impregnated herself. Well, of course, and birthed fourteen healthy snakeettes. Yeah, I've I've heard that. I've heard of that Snakelets, happening with yeah. Snake I've heard use, of that happening. Snake calves. Snake snake calves. No snakelets. Baby. Snakes How about are, no pots called, of gold? Because it's a rainbow <laughs> snake. Baby snakes are called snakelets. <laughs> snakelets. So I can scratch another thing off my bucket list. I now know what a baby snake is called. Yeah. Ronaldo is a 13-year-old Brazilian rainbow boa. <gasps> a little young, miss. Yeah. I mean, come on. Come on, lady. Uh, six feet in length, the snake is an impressive sight. You know, when they say that thing to you, they don't mean literally. No one's speaking. No one's talking about where Ronaldo came from. But it wasn't a good place because nine years ago, the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals mm -hmm. rescued him, her, him, them from them. its previous owner. No, it's a him or her, but I can't figure out. I well, think it was just, her all along. And let's possibly. But I've heard of this happening in 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 the animal kingdom before. Amphibians do it occasionally. Hmm. Ronaldo arrived at the Portsmouth College during his initial checkup. The snake was determined to be a guy. Tum, tum, tum. And his little cigarette pack rolled up. Since mm -hmm. then, he's lived a happy but solitary life in his enclosure, which leads me to other questions. If he's leading a happy, solitary life, why bring the kiddos into it? How did the babies show up? I mean, I know how the babies showed up, but how did the babies 
Like I said, they do it every now and again. The Animal Kingdom occasionally will do something like this. But don't you have to have... Mm -mm. Apparently not with some some of them. Reptiles and amphibians do this thing. Hmm. Apparently some some frogs, I think it is, or toads, fr toads, frogs, well, yeah, which will change are, sexes. If, they're if ugly. It's all, Even other toads wouldn't date yeah. them. Yeah, but apparently some of them actually change sex. Hmm. So there's precedent and, in the animal kingdom. Everything was normal until he started looking a little heavy. Pete Quinlan, apparently a reptile specialist, kept putting his hands in the middle of his back, going oh. slightly fatter than usual. He's a snake. He doesn't have hands. What do snakes do for that? <laughs> um, as it turned out, he wasn't chubby. He was just pregnant. Go oh, knock course. yourself up. If you're wondering, boas give live birth. Mm -hmm. They incubate their eggs inside and then out come a bunch of little fish bait <laughs> i would suggest getting them early or if you put them on a hook they will strangle the muskie before you ever <laughs> yeah. yeah my bait keeps eating my fish what am i gonna do yeah. well wait for it to eat a couple more then cook the whole thing yep we also have remember earlier this year we talked about the stingray that has done kind of the same thing yep and two yep. male sharks though there were two male sharks, and they thought maybe. Yeah, I think uh, I would rather go with Charlotte was a hermaphrodite kind of person, and rather than dating a shark, I mean that'll put a blemish on her whole family. <laughs> from Quitzer Mind via Chris Combs, my brother, no relation. From what's or what? Quizter Mind. I mispronounced it. Quizter Mind. Oh, that's much better. Via Chris Combs, my brother, no relation. The story of Joey, dubbed the unluckiest bear. Just try to keep track of this. It's a heartbreaking tale of human interference with wildlife gone Ari. Ari. Says you. Ari, only, Ari would only be useful in Jamaica. Mon. <laughs> it's my entire, right there you get my entire Jamaican vocabulary. Ari, Mon. Joey, an albino brown bear from Canada, da da was mistaken for a polar bear by authorities. Who earlier had said the snake was a guy. And subjected to a series of misguided actions. <sighs> Initially found in the lush forests of Canada, da, 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 uh, you in the back with the face. Um, do they find a lot of polar bears in the lush forests of Canada? Da, 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 da? No. They do not. So then they were making an assumption, which oh. makes an ass of you and umption. That's right. And umption's had enough of your act, pal. Joey was then transported to the North Pole. Where Santa said, who the hell are you? <laughs> Under the belief that he belonged there. However, I don't like Coca-Cola. Upon awakening in the freezing environment, Joey stood up and said, WTF! Which in bear translates to, oh, this is cold here. Yeah. So it became evident Joey was not adapting well. Environmentalists. Why? Is he almost freezing to death? Give him a clue? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It actually you would did. think they might have noticed the fur was not quite polar bearish. Well, and when you see him, he's shaped like a brown bear. Not like a polar bear. His so, head is shaped all wrong. So environmentalists, those experts that we often are told to believe in, soon realize their error. They are idiots after all. And brought Joey back to Canada. Da, da, da. Brains like peanuts, very small. Unfortunately, the confusion persisted. And Joey was mistakenly transported to the North Pole once again. <laughs> I'm guessing this is just guess. <laughs> Any park ranger could have looked at him and go, "No." <laughs> Despite the event, of mine, <laughs> he's just weirdly colored. Yeah, Despite I think someone put bleach in the wash. <laughs> Maybe they, you know, how they used to uh, in the World War II movies, they all show silhouettes of airplanes so you can tell them apart. Maybe they ought to do that for environmentalists so they can tell bears apart. It wouldn't help. They Despite couldn't find their bear with both hands. 
Despite the eventual realization of the mistake, Joey endured multiple relocations back and forth between the North Pole and Canada. Da, 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 da. So much so, Santa and his elves was, had, were placing over under bets. <laughs> In a, in a misguided attempt to prevent further confusion. 58 days over under. Joey's fur was dyed. Sorry? Dyed his fur. Wait, wait. These experts. Yes. Thought that if they Dying. dyed his fur, he'd remember he was a polar bear. No. No. They dyed his it dark because okay. he was white. He's albino. Yeah. Uh, however, this did not spare him from being mistaken for a polar bear again and being placed in a polar bear. How the hell can he be mistaken for a polar bear? He's got his fur dyed. <laughs> I mean, I, I know you got to go to a good place because otherwise it come out clumpy. Well, apparently, but... people they just thought he was a dirty polar bear. <laughs> Joe, man, you can't catch a break here. So they you should have been play. found. You should not have allowed yourself to be found by idiots. Yes. Yeah. But apparently, they that's all that populates the experts in Canada. Um, let's see. He gets placed in the polar yeah, bear probably. exhibit at the zoo, right? Okay. Yep. He faced bullying and mistreatment for other polar bears due to his different appearance. Shouldn't there be lawsuits? Because it's Canada. They're even, yeah, right? They're even more touchy-feely weird than we are. Ultimately, Joey found solace in an enclosure for brown bears. Brown bears where a viral video of him waking up from hibernation was captured. He comes out looking as disheveled as you can imagine. Well, he'd been drinking. He's had a tough, tough go of it, man. His story it serves as what a, they call a bear over. As a poignant reminder of the consequences of human misunderstanding and interference with wildlife. No, this is when people no. think they're experts, but really aren't. They are going to force it into the narrative they want. And this is why you can trust science. You just can't trust scientists. Always verify. Always, always, always. Uh, when now? Always. always. Oh, yes. Always verify. So have you ever had one of those sneezing jags that makes your eyes kind of you get the little dots? Oh, I've never. I don't have sneezing jags. I'll only after sneeze about once the, or twice. And after about the forty-second sneeze, you're going. Well, this is not fun anymore. I can't breathe in. I don't have time. <laughs> A sixty-three-year-old man had just undergone an operation to treat his recurring prostate cancer. He'd been recently oh. released from the hospital. Okay, so wound was healing, sutures removed. He had just okay. gotten the staples taken out that day. So he and that his is wife, something I just never want to have to happen to me in my life. Staples? There. Anywhere. <laughs> um, Too late for that. Yeah, I, I got them in weird. my back. I've, yeah. I had them in my ear. My wife thought they were funny. Yeah, I remember that. She's a weird lady. <laughs> and, well, of course, she's married to me, so. He and his bride decided they'd go grab a breakfast thing, right? Okay. So he and the wife head to the diner. Order the food, he sneezes. And his guts spilled out of his stomach. Yes, he had sneezed so hard that he tore open his surgery wound. Oh, 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 oh. And the pressure ejected inner things out. Which you, is what now, through what is now a gaping hole. You, you, you. The good news is. There's the man good news survived. And, yeah, well, he oh, survived. Yeah. And didn't really seem to mind all that much with his innards hanging as outards. <laughs> We're saying that because if he'd had his way, he was just going to drive himself back to the hospital. <laughs> oh, I love, this is like my dad the time he cut his toes off in the yeah. lawnmower. Oh, no. How are you going to drive? Slowly. I, yeah. You know, I'm gonna, first, I'm taking a shower. And that's what he did. The bizarre. <laughs> he did. It's incredible. The, but, well, you have to. You have to take a shower and put on new underwear before you go to the hospital. That's right. If you can. The unfortunate man's bizarre post-sneeze catastrophe was detailed in the American Journal of Medical Case Reports. More experts. He, he has sadly struggled with his health in the past. History of stubborn prostate cancer doesn't seem to want to go away. Cancer's like that. Nine years prior to the sneeze incident, the man had had his prostate removed. Cancer returned, this time in the bladder. Hmm. So he underwent a cystectomy. Took his bladder gone. Out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I know. Other well, recovered quickly. Soon enough, he was allowed to go home. Yep. Two weeks later, he came in for a routine checkup. 
His surgery wound had healed so well they removed the surgical staples. And then came breakfast. No one else had breakfast at that diner that day. For months. Well, no one <laughs> no one kept their breakfast for long. <laughs> hey, where'd the guy, you know, puke or sneeze out his guts? Right over here. You know those the bad movies you see where those things happen? Yeah. Remember Braveheart at the end? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, if he could have only sneezed, it would have been older quicker. <laughs> Being a gentleman, he courteously covered his spilled guts after the sneeze with his shirt and told his wife he had to That's, uh, try, he had to get himself back to the hospital. Things have got to happen. Told his wife he's going to drive back to the hospital. Now, I know how that would go over. Fortunately for the man, his wife talked him out of that. Smart I'm woman. Guessing she went to the kitchen, got a frying pan, and said, go ahead. Yeah, Make a it. move for that car. We'll have another surgery. Yep. Uh, after all, any movement, of course, could have damaged his inject ejected. I mean, think about it. Intestines are inside for a reason. Yeah, right. They're a bit on the delicate side. Yeah. We don't want them to. And you don't want any more to come out because, you know, the rest of them are still in there. So they called an ambulance. Good. The ambulance got there in four minutes. Seriously. Mostly because I'm thinking they were crawling over each other to make this run. <laughs> we got to see this. When the situation described to the paramedics, they were, as you may have guessed, what's the word I'm thinking of? Flabbergasted. I mean, yeah. rare, rarely. That is actually the exact word I'm thinking of. Now, their flabbers had never been this gasted. As the EMT said, our training doesn't really cover a scenario where a man sneezes and his bowels come out of him. <laughs> One of the paramedics had attended lectures about abdominal wounds. Recommended keeping the injuries and any exposed organs as moist as possible. So obviously these guys aren't under 30. Yeah. Because then they couldn't say moist without. <laughs> <laughs> the medic soaked a sterile stomach pad with saline secured it in place with gauze and bingo off to the hospital. He goes to make the long story short. Well, less long. The doctor successfully stuffed everything back where it belonged. The intestines had not been damaged, which was in amazing to me. Nice. Um, this time, however, the doctors decided to take no chances. They sewed him up, sutures and staples. Six days later, he left the hospital once more, reportedly in good condition. Oh, good. They listed his, his injury. The final diagnosis they gave him simply listed the condition as evisceration. Oh, you. This is true. Really news. Send email to TITR at netradio.network.